Okay, Shalom. Kahlo, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The honest the apostle and elders of the great millstone who were well. Citations to the brothers on the four corners of the earth, pushing his word in truth and in sincerity. This is I, Robin Gab, and Yasha Allah from Great Millstone, Wisconsin. Uh, redemption, what does it mean and what does it mean to you? Um, redemption, I, I would define redemption as uh, being being uh, being bought back, so to speak, or being, or being brought from a place of no return, you know, and um, that's where, that's where Israel is at right now, that's where Israel's been for the past, for the past, you know, uh, some odd thousands of years, you know, um, it's ever since, ever since Adam, you know, ever since, uh, you know, ever since Adam, ever since Moses, you know, Joshua, um, you know, you got uh, Saul and King David, King Solomon, you know, ever since the ancient world, uh, Israel has been a, in a constant state of being at the point of no return, you know. And um, you know, how was shy to prophesied to uh, to die for you know to die for us to redeem us, you know. When he finally did that, he, he committed that act, you know. Uh, he brought us back from that point of no return, you know. So, and uh, in the book of Hosea, it was prophesied that we that we would be called we wouldn't be called the Lord's people in the places of our captivity, you know. And that and that's ha that's happening now. You know, so without further ado, I'll just go right, right into the scriptures. Um, this is Hosea chapter 1, verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, a children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. You know, and that's what Israel did. You know, we committed great whoredom. You know, we we uh, went off and worshipped other gods, we sacrificing uh, our kids and passing them through the fire and doing all types of unspeakable acts, you know, being homosexuals and and uh, you know, just not following the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, that's the gist of it. But when uh, the Lord told Hosea to go ahead and when he told Hosea to go ahead and take a wife of whoredoms, you know, symbolic. It meant something. You know, and he had two children by her, and uh, those names were significant. You know, this is Hosea chapter one, verse nine, verse eight. Now, when she had weaned Lord who am I? She conceived and bare a son. Then said the Most High, Call his name Lo and Me. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your power, you know. So we haven't been the Lord's people, man, for years, you know, for centuries, for millennia. And, you know, the Lord hasn't been our power, man. The Lord has actually hid, our, hid his face from us until, you know, actually, you know, Yahweh Shai came and he, he redeemed us, man. He came and he bought us back. He died for our sins as a record, as a, uh, as a uh, ransom, so to speak, you know. You know, and, that's, and that, that uh, event was really significant. I have uh, a couple more scriptures. You know, I wanted to go into First Corinthians a little bit. You know, because it, it's because the definition is in the scripture. You know, it tells us it tells us that you know we were we were brought back by Yahweh Shine. This is First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty-three. You are well. You know what? I'm going to start with uh, verse twenty-two. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty-two. For he that is called in the Lord. Being a servant is the Lord's freeman, you know, and when you are called in the Lord, you know, as being a servant, you know, going on the highways and byways and teaching the word, awaiting for his return, man, you're doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You're being a servant. Is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Yahweh Shai's servant. So either way it goes, whether you call yourself, whether you call, whether you call yourself a servant or you call yourself free, you're still a servant of Yahweh Shai, <laughs> no matter which way it goes, you know. Like scriptures say, uh, we are prisoners of hope. You know, in Zechariah uh, 9 and 12, I believe. It says, ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. You know, and that price that we were bought for was uh, Yahweh Shai spilling his blood, man, and redeeming us, you know. It says, now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Of course, you know, that goes into another subject. But, you know, we were basically, like I said earlier, man, we were bought back by Yahweh Shai, man, not with cash, you know, not uh, being traded with, you know, precious materials and metals, but we were bought back with his blood, man. The sprinkling of Yahweh Shai's blood meant the redemption of the elect of the nation of Israel, you know, and uh, we can go into that in the book of Acts, you know, just really quick. And this is Acts chapter 5. Verse 29 it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. 
the power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, and to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You know? So that was that was the redemption right there when he shed his blood, man. He forgave us of our sins so that we can obtain mercy, so we can have a chance of entering into the kingdom. Because back then, Israel didn't have a chance in hell, man. You know? Israel was totally wicked. So with that with that uh, significant act that Yahweh I did, he actually opened up the door for us to reach the kingdom, you know? And that's the elect, you know, the one-third, the one-third elect, 144,000, and the great multitude, you know? The ones that will actually follow Yahweh Shah no matter where he goes, no matter what he says, you know? So that redemption, what redemption, you know, means to me in a nutshell is that the door was open for us, you know? And in order to be redeemed, in order to, you know, be sent to the kingdom of heaven, you know, like script, earlier scripture just said, we have to be servants of Yahweh Shah, you know, and that... And that entails, you know, one big job. And that goes into Romans 12, present yourself as a living sacrifice. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 1, you know. Because this is the price that the Lord bought us for. It says, I beseech you, breath, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service, you know. Why is it our reasonable service? Because when the Lord brought us, when he bought us back from that point of no return, this is what he asked for us in return for that, for that, uh, that, that uh, redemption, so to speak, you know? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High, you know? So that's what we're supposed to be doing, man, getting into the scriptures and doing all we can for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shot, because we honestly owe our lives to him, you know? The lives that we have now, in this present world and the lives that we will have in the afterlife, man. In the kingdom of heaven, you know? And uh, I just want to give a little glimpse of, um, you know, of that life that we'll have, you know, and being redeemed, you know, from uh, the power the uh, <laughs> the power that sin had over us at that time, you know? This is, Acts, this is Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, and this is what we got redeemed for. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven, repaired as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the most high is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And the most high himself shall be with them, and be their power. And the most high shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know, in our former lives, our our lives at this moment will be passed away, man. All the sinning, all the all the going off, and you know, and having the flesh take hold of our thoughts, man, and having 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 demons plague us every goddamn day, you know, and having to fight fight uh, demons in the flesh, you know, these other nations. You got to deal with Esau every time you go to fucking work, you know. You got to deal with traffic driving to work. You got to deal with all these other elements of the world, you know. But being redeemed by Yahweh Shai, you know, sooner or later, sooner rather than later, you know. Uh, Presuming to prophecy, you know, we will enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. We will have, we will have a new life, you know. Like scripture said, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, you know. So with that, you know, that was just uh, a small portion of what redemption means to me. And um, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Kahlo Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Double Honesty Apostle and Elder Great Millstone, in citation to the brothers on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word in truth and in sincerity. Shalom.